okay so let me make it little smaller and i will search for um yeah okay can you hear hear sound from my computer type in yes if you can hear so is this is this clear oh wait a second i am just sharing oh i'm sorry uh i will share my screen now yeah now it now let me check <laughs> This is Volvo's all-new XC90. It's the flagship model in their range, so not surprisingly, they've spent a great deal of time getting it right. And because it's a Volvo... Okay, so uh, what I was discussing about uh, design up to Sigma Y is the, are these red, red components. Can you see them? Type in, uh, type in, I can see. Is my screen visible? Yes, okay. Okay, so whatever is red is not supposed to deform at all. It is not supposed to deform. Okay, it is supposed to be occupant zone. So it has to remain unchanged then only doors can open once that's the regulation so what regulation says after a frontal impact door should open once because you don't know the frontal impact can happen with other persons involved or you can directly hit on a tree and nobody is there to help you out so if you are still alive you should be able to get out of the car right you should not be get stuck into it so this zone if it deforms you can see my mouse cursor if this zone deforms that is something which is not acceptable okay this is the zone which is not supposed to deform so if i annotate it using yeah here it is clear so this is something which should not deform at all okay <laughs> see maruti is designed only to earn money they are never designed for any kind of a safety Okay, so they are, they are designed to save weight, they are designed to save cost, they are supposed to run uh, uh, with maximum fuel efficiency, they are not designed for crash, no, none of their vehicle is crash worthy. Okay, so they are not crash worthy designs, okay, so don't buy Maruti cars, I hate them. Okay, uh, so let's, uh, let's play it again. Yeah, yeah even see us. Even see us. It is. It is not even zero star. It is less than zero star. So they they are the crap cars. Don't buy them. Okay. So let's go and uh, uh, see this thing. Okay. Wait a second. I will undo this. And I don't want an annotation. Yeah. Although safety has been right at the top of their priority list, which is why I'm. We have a guy from Sweden, right? And. Volvo is a pioneer in safety. Okay. Uh, so if my trainings go very well, my first uh, uh, first vehicle, a luxury vehicle, will be a Volvo car. Uh, okay, jokes apart, but that's my goal. Okay, so uh, it's a they are safety masters. They are freaks. They are freaks in safety. Okay, so make sure that you have a goal of buying a Volvo car. So make sure that uh, everyone is having a goal of a safe. We're about to watch one being demolished. Yep, a brand new 50 grand car is going to get intentionally injured here at Volvo's high tech test center in Gothenburg, Sweden. It's all part of Volvo's vision to ensure no one will ever get killed or seriously injured in one of their cars. 
And if you think this vision lies 50 years in the future, then you'd be woefully misguided, because Volvo claims that this will take place in under five years' time, by 2020. So this, this is like a five years old video, and they have achieved their aim of uh, having a car which is designed, which will make sure no one gets killed or seriously injured in any of the vehicle which they launch in 2020. So they achieved it. And it's a fantastic job. That sounds like a ridiculously tall order, but Volvo are clearly well on their way with the XC90. As prevention is always better than cure, the XC90... Okay, so what do you see? Uh, what, what you see here is an interior part uh, of, of a vehicle, which is substantially important similar to that of an exterior part. We'll come to it. We are, I'm talking about safety aspect. I'm not talking about aesthetics, okay? Safety is we'll packed with a host of advanced warning and intervention systems to limit the possibility yeah, of a crash. But no matter how hard you try, accidents can and will happen. So what's Volvo's master plan? Well, today we're gonna to witness a situation you are uh, driving home from work very late at night and the only thing on the radio seems to be something like Kenny G or maybe Krista Berg and you've fallen asleep and the car has veered off the road into this ditch you're doing 50 and then it hits this the culvert at the end of the ditch and what happens then well we're about to find out this is a completely standard XC90. However, it's been coated with all manner of sensors to measure exactly what happens to the car during the crash. Measuring what happens to... Okay, so what you see here are not mannequin. Mannequin is something which can measure nothing. They are outside shops. That's all. What you see here are called as dummies. Crash test dummies. And there are a number of companies or... Uh, I will not say n number, some four or five companies were there uh, who are relentlessly doing study of biomechanics. They are taking slices of a human body, of course dead human body, and they are measuring stiffnesses of every, uh, every bone, every tissue, every muscle. They are measuring what is the stiffness of a skin, and then they are feeding that data to these dummies. Every day they are coming up with a very close to real life dummies. They are the measurement freaks okay so they they have sensors which are of a tremendous value to every single analyst who is going to analyze this crash test data okay to the occupants so of these three highly sophisticated dummies. crash test dummies and all this data is then fed to a nerve center in the boot and because Volvo wants to capture as much information as possible, even the matte orange paint serves a purpose because it reveals more detail to the high-speed cameras that will record the short but eventful life of this luxury car. The crash sequence is about to take place. I'm not alone during this test. There are other journalists from all over the world who are just as curious about Volvo's bold claims as I am. Now what, what do you see, just uh, give me, yeah, what do you see here, this is called as a sled, okay, sled is nothing but it's just going to pull using a hook and a rope and this is just going to uh, pull this At the exit, velocity of this car is 80 kilometers per hour, okay, that's what it is, 80 kilometers per hour. At the Mikey, Mikey. Initially, the gravel ditch doesn't present any danger. However, the culvert at the end is another matter because hitting that at 50 miles an hour is enough to launch the Volvo skywards. That's over two tons of Swedish metal now airborne. On board, the driver and passenger airbags deploy at the moment of impact, giving essential protection from any frontal surfaces. As the vehicle lands, the front driver's wheel takes the full force and shears completely in half. 
Finally, as the car bounces and skews left, the airbags on the right-hand side are triggered. I join the media scrum to take a... Okay. Have you seen how complex was this scenario? Have you seen how much technology was involved in understanding, sensing which airbag to get deployed at what time? Because if you can deploy all airbags at same time, the airbags are porous, uh, porous fabrics. They are not balloons. Okay, so they are they are supposed to make sure that gas es escapes out as soon as you hit on something. Okay. So that is something which is very complex. A closer now. look at the damage. So immediately you notice that the front wheel has been shattered and pushed back. But actually, when you look at the... Okay, so what we are looking at is all four doors are open. That means an occupant can get out of the vehicle by himself or herself. There is no need of any assistance if he or she survives. They can get out of it. Okay? So that the face of the car. It doesn't look that badly damaged and critically the A-pillar, which is the thing that a lot of experts will look at, this doesn't look like a lot of deformation of the A-pillar and that's obviously where stuff can intrude into the cabin, you know, crushing feet, legs, that sort of thing. Lotta Jakobsen, Head of Technical Safety at Volvo, explain the new system safeguarding occupants in accidents such as this. It was a quite complex event, you know, the car came into a ditch and already when entering the ditch, the seat belts uh, are tightened up because we sense that it's a ditch and then we need to position the... Okay, so you have to monitor between these two lines how they are moving backwards. This is an active safety feature. So what is happening? There are piston, there is a piston and cylinder arrangement. It has a gas on top of it. As soon as it senses that there is a crash, the explosion will happen and the piston will be pushed down, which indeed will pull the belt so that if you are adjusting some kind of a volume control or something, an AC control, you are getting pulled back and you will be sitting up front, up forward. The, uh, the occupants, so they've been sitting upright. And when then uh, coming to the embankment, we saw the vertical forces coming out through the vehicle. It was quite a big jump. It was, and it's, it's those type of situations we've seen in the real world will actually cause spine injuries. So that's why we developed energy absorbing functionality in the seat that actually dampens the forces coming through the spine of the occupant. And together with the up straightening of the posture helps to uh, these guys to actually sustain a higher force without fracturing. Previous crash test data has revealed that people tend to move around a lot in a collision, so the seat belts are able to tighten by as much as 10 centimeters in 0.1 seconds. Coupled with the new deformable seat design, Volvo has been able to reduce spinal injury. This is, all, this is LS Dyna model. Okay, Volvo extensively use LS Dyna. They haven't used any other solver since LS Dyna got introduced by a third. How does the car sense the severity of the incident which it, it, it's about to, to happen? This car uses the accelerometers and the gyros in the car only. You right. could of course add more information uh, with other senses as well, but this one detects the situation by feeling the uh, changes of emotions in the car. So it, we have trained the car <laughs> and the senses to, to recognize a situation like this, wow. as compared to somebody just driving around. Yes. Of course, this is only. So this is a side crash where you have deformable, uh, deformable barrier moving at 55 kilometers per hour. You can write one accident scenario in which serious injury or death could occur. So Volvo can. This is an offset deformable barrier frontal impact. So it is an offset impact. It's not a full impact, okay? So it's an offset one. Continues to crash XC90s from every angle to make sure the car is safe, whatever happens. But perhaps you're thinking the type of incident we've witnessed today is unlikely to happen. Was that, was that interesting? So can you understand how the basics of engineering are playing a vital role in saving people's life? Okay, so this is, this is just one example. There are 
hundreds of examples out there where you can actually understand the importance of basics of engineering and getting we only think that these people are using tools these are these people are having uh, high end computers that's why they are able no they have a clear mindset of basic using the basics of engineering to solve a complex problem i will just uh, show you this uh, after this roll over you can you can see of course this is only one accident scenario in which serious injury or death could occur so volvo continues to crash xc90s from every angle to make sure the car is safe whatever okay so happened. After this you can see this was something which was uh this was this was like uh, uh, a, a very simple car it would have just got crushed out they have made so much of engineering in this this area where they are they are focusing of making it that it's not supposed to deform at all at any cost it should not deform that's what it is okay so uh yes suhas i'm going to share a video as i shared yesterday so you can you can actually see it no problem okay fine so was that interesting now you can feel that how we are we as mechanical engineers are supposed to combine basics of engineering time integration that is ls dyna and the physical test to make sure that every vehicle or every design we do is trying to save some time or a some life or other okay